Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, since this will be the last episode of uh, year 2016, we decided to uh, do a comprehensive review of uh, the Indian economy 2016-17, uh, as well as how the economy would sort of pan out uh, uh, in 2017-18. Uh, so this year, uh, broadly, we've seen uh, global headwinds uh, uh, taking uh, deeper roots, uh, China, the Chinese economy uh, was a big cause for worry in the beginning of the year. Uh, there was a kind of uh, big financial uh, markets, uh, 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 sharp fall in the financial markets in China, uh, which caused uh, immense worry to, uh, to the bulk of uh, the emerging economies as well as the global economy, uh, because China today indeed uh, incrementally produces the largest share of uh, GDP, global GDP. Uh, uh, the US, uh, the European Union, Japan were throughout the year very tepid. Uh, IMF has uh, reviewed downwards uh, GDP, global uh, GDP growth rates. Uh, India is not insulated from that. India has uh, domestically ha had its own set of problems. Uh, and one of the key problems India uh, is facing uh, today is lack of uh, revival in private investment. Uh, another big problem India has faced, which Finance Minister J Arun Jaitley has spoken about, uh, is the fact that banks are uh, hugely saddled with uh, uh, problem assets, uh, some say uh, of the order of 10 lakh crores or maybe 13, 14 percent of the outstanding assets. Banks have not been able to lend because of that. Bank needs, uh, banks need more capital. Uh, one of the things that demonetization uh, uh, is supposed to address uh, is to get more liquidity to banks and uh, give enough fiscal space for the government to recapitalize banks. Uh, so to discuss all these issues, we have two eminent economists uh, with us today. Uh, Dr. Narendra Jadav, who uh, is a, a member of Rajya Sabha. Uh, he is a trained economist. Uh, he's a former member of Planning Commission, author of several books, uh, was also vice chancellor of Pune University. Uh, and we have with us... Uh, Not to mention uh, RBI. R yeah, uh, he was chief economist, sorry, chief economist at, RB at RBI, uh, which was his uh, earlier avatar. Uh, so, and we have with us uh, another very eminent economist, uh, Professor uh, Arun Kumar, who uh, retired from JNU uh, last, last year. year. Uh, but he, uh, we have him here because uh, he is probably, he's done the most extensive work on, on, on India's black economy. And he's widely recognized as somebody who's uh, really studied the innards of India's black economy. So, so the right person to have uh, uh, with us. Uh, welcome to our show, gentlemen. So, so tell us, uh, uh, Mr. Jadav, I'll start with you. Please. How do you uh, review the economy 2016-17? Uh, and how do you see it panning out in the next financial year? Well, uh, at one level, Indian economy is... Uh, the fastest growing country in the world uh, today, 7% uh, plus. But at the same time, the job creation has been very slow. Uh, the manufacturing sector is stagnating. Uh, small sector is hurting. Exports have been declining. Inflation has been contained. Uh, but even before the demonetization uh, initiative was taken, uh, while the economy was growing at a high rate of 7% plus, uh, there were several problems and now at the same time there are a lot of global imponderables. Uh, you mentioned some of them but two more that I want to add to the list that you have said. Uh, one is that there is a big uncertainty about the oil prices. Oil prices are expected to cross $60 per barrel. Uh, mm -hmm. From a very low level, they are rising and uh, the future prospects are not known. At the same time, there is also uncertainty uh, about the U.S. Federal Reserve uh, interest rate policy. Uh, on 14th December, mm -hmm. uh, after a decade, uh, they have revised, they have, uh, uh, they have raised uh, the interest rate and this had to be factored in. As we go into the future, with the change of uh, uh, presidential with the with the uh, U.S. President uh, uh, Donald Trump coming in, uh, there are a lot of uncertainties about the future policies that would be followed. Uh, so there are a lot I of mean, even Trump might get more protectionist right, than uh, right, than right. earlier uh, presidents. That is what yeah. is being talked about. Okay. Against this backdrop, we had a historic development of demonetization and. Um, 
two historic developments took place in our country uh, in 2016. One was, of course, uh, passage of GST, goods and services tax. And the second one, what happened in November, we all know about that, demonetization. These two are going to shape uh, the things to happen oh. in the year 2017. These two, each one of them is a historic move and that is, a that is going to have very important implications for future. In fact, I happen to believe that demonetization and the number of measures which have been taken along with that, demonetization, voluntary cash disclosure scheme, restrictions on gold holdings, encouragement to digital payments, proposed GST and incentives now given to the small traders, all of these together is going to completely change the way Indian economy has been working. Okay. Indian economy will not be the same mm. as it was so far in the year 2017 and it would change for the better. Okay, That's we'll, my we'll come uh, to uh, some of the other details. Professor Arun Kumar, you have been commenting on uh, demonetization, post-demonetization economy uh, over the last uh, one month. I have heard you out in so many, on so many TV channels. Uh, Please tell us the, the impact this year and uh, in the next financial year. Right. So, uh, as both of you have said, uh, the economy is doing very well till November 8th and suddenly after that with demonetization, there has been a crisis that has come into the Indian economy, especially for the unorganized sector, for the poor, for the farmers and so on. And that has also translated into a crisis for the organized sector because the demand there has fallen, uh -huh. the discretionary expenditures have fallen, etc. Uh -huh. So for the first time, the luxury car market, yeah. which actually doesn't pertain to the poor, which yeah. actually is a discretionary demand and people who pay in check, uh, even they have reduced their demand. Uh -huh. So in other words, the economy has suddenly taken a break yeah. and it is going down. Uh -huh. Second, as you pointed out, is that the international situation is very uncertain given that Donald Trump is coming, the Fed rates may fall and that may lead to outflow of capital. Increase, Fed rates may increase. Fed, increase yeah. uh, yes. Fed rate mm -hmm. and that therefore the, the outflow of capital from India may increase. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there are two great uncertainties as both of you have pointed out within which the year is ending. Mm -hmm. And that is what is setting the ground for the next year. Mm -hmm. So first thing is the budget has to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Now when the budget has to be prepared, and if the data is uncertain, then making the budget becomes very difficult. Yeah. And that's where I think the finance minister will face enormous problem as to how to formulate the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, what is happening is that the fiscal deficit may rise. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's expected that the black economy may be tame, yeah. but I don't think much of the black economy will be tame. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's not that the tax collection would rise. But if the economy goes down, as has happened on the 15th of December, the data that came mm -hmm. for advanced tax collection, 40 mm -hmm. companies, large companies have reported lower profits. Yeah. So if profits fall, tax mm -hmm. collection would fall. Yeah. On the other hand, given the crisis that the unorganized sector faces, the poor in the rural areas face, you'll have to increase expenditures for them. Sure. So therefore, the fiscal deficit would tend to rise. Mm -hmm. Now, if that happens, then capital expenditures may actually be cut back. Mm -hmm. You know, And because the private sector is cutting back uh, its investment, it's So falling. you're saying instead of... The government was expecting that demonetization will give them right, huge benefits right. to increase capital expenditure. Yes, yes. You mean in I, the medium term it could be the reverse? I think it could be the reverse yeah. for the yeah. following reason that the, as the fiscal deficit rises, the government is very sensitive to what the international agencies say yeah. about the fiscal deficit. Mm -hmm. So they would want to cut it back. Yeah. Now they can't cut it back where the poor are already hurting on the social sector expenditures. Mm -hmm. So they may cut it back on capital expenditure, mm -hmm. which would be the exact opposite of what needs to be done. Yeah. But given the macro situation, that would be a problem. Second is the balance of payment will be a problem mm -hmm. because people have lost, uh, the, the credit, currency has lost credibility. Mm -hmm. So people are shifting towards dollar and towards gold. Mm -hmm. So more inflow of uh, gold may take place mm -hmm. and people shifting to dollars would mean that the price of the rupee would fall vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. Yeah. Uh, secondly, as was said, that the there is an estimate that rupee might be 72 by some right, right. big yeah. bankers. So 72 bankers. is one estimate, but it could be, you know, uh, mm -hmm. whatever it, it turns out. Mm -hmm. Because petroleum goods imports will also rise given that the petroleum uh, prices are And the oil rising. prices are hardening. Oil yeah. prices are hardening, so mm -hmm. petroleum prices. So therefore, the import bill would rise, but exports would not correspondingly rise because the Indian economy, the industry is facing a deficit of profit and therefore they may not be able to export more. Okay. So the balance of payment will be a problem. Mm -hmm. So what was a good macroeconomic situation before November 8 in terms of fiscal deficit, in terms of inflation and in terms of the balance of payment, that is deteriorating. Okay. And within that context when the budget is made, I think the budget will have a lot of constraints mm -hmm. in terms of what it can do. Mm -hmm. And that's why the prospect for 2017 at the moment mm -hmm. is not very good. 
Mm. And this currency shortage as a result of this demonetization mm. is likely to last for seven to eight months. Most yeah. estimates are that people are hoarding currency and therefore even yeah. if RBI prints currency, they are not going to be able to fulfill that okay. for seven to eight months. Okay, uh, and yeah. therefore the recessionary conditions are setting in. Mm. You know, when investment declines, unemployment declines, mm. that is what recessionary so conditions are. So you, you're saying about. the recessionary conditions setting in? Uh, setting in. So, uh, so, Mr. Jadav, uh, mm. uh, can you respond to some of the points of that course, he's making? Of course, of course, I would now, love to. I'll, I'll just, two uh, data points I would like to give you. Today, there's a story in the Indian Express, mm. uh, which gives uh, uh, details of point of sale, uh, uh, you know, uh, machines. machines mm. And it, which grew uh, month after month, 33,000 crore January right. 2 to October, it was 51,000. Mm -hmm. There's a 50% fall in sales through point of uh, mm -hmm. you know sale machines mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh, uh, see it's huge so mm. and some states have already started saying that their revenues are falling mm -hmm. uh, they're estimating mm -hmm. fall in revenues mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so so okay so may, you, may I respond it? now yes yeah. The, uh, the to what the you have said and what uh, no, the, the fiscal the fiscal situation yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. um, yeah I almost completely disagree with the assessment made by my uh, friend here uh, I do not think that uh, the demonetization is going to turn the good macroeconomic situation into bad. First of all, macroeconomic situation was not good before demonetization, and it is not going to get worse. What is going to happen is that so you admit that it was not good before. Mm. Yes, that has to be reckon reckoned with. Mm. But what is important is that with demonetization, there would be adverse effect on the Indian economy. Mm. There's no doubt about that. Mm. But that would be purely a short-term effect. I would imagine that for the last quarter of this year, uh, 2016, uh, there would be a dip. The first quarter of 2017 would also, there, there would be a dip. So for the year as a whole, if you look at the financial year 16-17, mm. there would be a, a fall in GDP by one percentage point. But that, that's, after your, that, that's your estimate. That that is my estimate. Mm. There are people who are saying RBI is saying only half a percentage point. Mm. Uh, some country, some people are saying uh, two percentage point, three percentage point decline. I am saying that there would be a modest one percentage point decline in the GDP. That will be in the short run. Mm. Immediately in the second half. I think that in the in the second half of 2017. No, I'm saying that uh, beginning of the financial year 2017-18, mm. that is April 1st onwards, mm. there would be positive signs. Mm. Why would that happen? It will happen because of two reasons: fiscal deficit going down. I disagree. I'll tell you why. Mm. Depending on depending up. depend uh, going, going up, up. Huh, going up. Mm. I disagree with that. I'm saying that there would be. In fact, you see, there are two things going to happen. One is what is happening in the banking system and what is happening in the government revenues. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about both of them. We all know that very large amount of cash has come into the banks, 13.5 mm -hmm. uh, lakh crore and so yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Now, banks are flushed with funds now. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it is historically seen that wherever there is a larger incidence of black money, inflationary pressures are higher. To the extent that we make a hit yeah, yeah. on the stock of black money, inflationary pressures would be abated. Now, if inflationary pressures are abated and the banks are flushed with money, the combination of two suggests to me that there would be a sharp increase in a sharp decline, <laughs> reduction in interest rate. <laughs> I predict that in the next four months, there would be one and a half percentage point okay, decline. I, uh, yeah. No, let me, let me complete, yeah, complete One One point five percentage point yeah. decline in the interest rate. <laughs> one percentage point decline means, for example, in housing loans, it means 15% increase in their purchasing power. 15% okay. decline in EMI, and then it's 15% increase in their purchasing power. What about demand so, dep uh, depression? So what will happen is that the demand depression... Is interest rate uh, reduction boss, enough to increase demand? Demand depression is going to take place in this quarter and the next quarter. By the time the interest rates come down, mm -hmm. and I hope that, that happens faster, mm -hmm. and I think it will, that will give a very big flip to manufacturing sector and to SMEs. Mm -hmm. And that is where major yeah. job creation also takes place. Uh, so that is one part. So I do not think the revival is going to take a longer okay. time. It will happen okay. sooner th rather than later. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the fiscal deficit. Uh, I believe that the fiscal deficit is not going to rise because depending on the outcome of this voluntary cash disclosure, mm -hmm. voluntary cash disclosure, uh, that... So you're confident that the 
this I'm confident cash disclosure lot of will, money, will, lot of money is going to come the, in. Give a big right, revenue booster. Right. Huh? At the same time, movie, movement towards the uh, digital payments mm -hmm. also means greater revenue for the government. Okay. So government revenues are also going to get a big boost. Yeah. And with the big boost coming there, mm -hmm. I think in the budget, not only fiscal to if the decision is taken to keep the same fiscal deficit uh, that was expected for this year for the next year there would be enough room to discretionary spending okay. increase so, including capital expenditure. okay i take your point so uh, pro so, professor arun kumar yeah. uh, respond to two three things yeah. that he said one, one is your, your yeah one, one is your <laughs> estimate of gdp deceleration right, right. and uh, whether we'll have a big revenue Correct. upside yeah, yeah. by through this IDS scheme. Yeah. Right, right. So, you know, when we think about the interest rate, mm -hmm. uh, the money that is deposited in the banks is only temporary because people are withdrawing it. You know, mm -hmm. people had the stock of money. <clears throat> and I would say that bulk of this money that is coming in is actually from businesses. Mm -hmm. Businesses hold bulk of the cash for their working capital. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they will need it. So, therefore, th that money may come in but only temporarily and as the, the uh, you know, new currency is coming out, that mm. go back. Mm. Not only that, because of hoarding, more may go out than actually is come in. Mm -hmm. You know, because people are hoarding, you know, it, uh, banks cash. are complaining that mm. cash is not circulating, the 2,000 rupee notes are not coming back, mm. the 100 rupee notes are not coming back, and that's why the shortage continues, in spite of the RBI mm. saying that we have printed 5.5 lakh crores of uh, yeah. new currency, etc. Mm -hmm. So therefore, my suspicion is, that there is going to be no excess cash with the banks because of which they can cut their interest rate. Mm -hmm. So that's not. Second is that even if interest rate is cut, the point is it does not lead to higher investment yeah. because as we've seen in the case of US or Eurozone, etc., even when interest rates are close to zero, mm -hmm. in a situation where demand is not there, mm -hmm. when capacity utilization is low, mm -hmm. investment does not take place. The, what is called the accelerator in the uh, mm -hmm. eco economics terms, mm -hmm. accelerator does not act. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there is no, uh, uh, nothing which suggests that mm -hmm. even if interest rate falls by 1%, mm -hmm. and in, in a recession, interest rates fall. Mm -hmm. Interest rates always fall, but they don't lead to an increase in so investment. So you think the private I, investors will also wait uh, for clarity wait. On, on the post-demonetization uh, yes, phase? Yes, yeah. they are already waiting. One uh, investor told me that we are now going month to month. Mm -hmm. But when you go month to month, investment is a long-term phenomena. It's not a short-term phenomena. Therefore, investment is all getting postponed. Mm -hmm. And especially because the capacity utilization was already down to 75%, and that has probably fallen to about 50%. Mm -hmm. When the capacity utilization is as low as this, investment would not take place. Mm -hmm. So in other words, this interest rate, mm -hmm. even if it is cut, and I don't think it will be cut, because the banks do not have time to lend, banks do not have time for anything else. As a policy, it may be reduced, but it will not lead to a boost in investment. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the decline in the economy is going to be very sharp. It's not going to be 1 or 2%. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at least 5 to 6% decline, and possibly recessionary conditions are taking hold, mm -hmm. in which case the revenue boost will not be there. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the revenue will fall. And as I said, expenditures will have to rise because the poor people, the unorganized sector, the farmers are in distress. So you'll have to increase expenditures yeah. there. And if you increase expenditures, the fiscal debt will rise. Can I ask you about both? So, just one question, yeah. sharp question. Uh, assuming that the <coughs> government gets a revenue upside from the uh, income voluntary declaration scheme. Yeah, so I'm coming to that. Uh, so, huh? so, so suppose they get a revenue upside of, of say one and a half lakh crores or something. Uh, there no, I, I, I no, will, they, will they? Should the government use that to recapitalize banks, which is course, most critical, or should it spend it on uh, on other physical and social infrastructure? Sure. No, sure. Uh, uh, to raise demand, I think they should spend it on the physical and the other infrastructure because the demand is what's collapsed. Okay. So that's the more important thing than this. Then I would say recapitalizing that, banks. But yeah. I would also say that banks are going to actually face further crisis mm. because the NPAs are going to rise, yeah. because the profitability is hit. Farmer is unable to repay because he's not getting cash. Industry is small hit. sector. So the NPA is going to rise further rather than decline. So okay. even if government tries to recapitalize by one and a half lakh crore, that's mm. not going to solve the problem of the banks. Okay. So therefore, in a sense, the banking system is going into a crisis. Mm. Investment is declining. Unemployment is uh, increasing. And that this is what recessionary conditions are all about. So inflation will definitely fall because in a recessionary situation, inflation falls. Yeah. But that is not a positive sign because incomes have contracted more, mm. so the real wages have fallen. Okay, can and I, when real wages fall, yeah. then you know mm. you have a problem mm. of the economy going further into Okay, recession. Mr. Jadav, can you just yes, respond of to... Course, uh, of course. Respectfully... Uh, yeah. Is his point that of course, of course. Uh, in, in the medium term, mm -hmm. all these indicators actually will decline rather than improve. No, I, I completely disagree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, respectfully, I do not share the uh, overly pessimistic uh, uh, projections that uh, my friend has given here. Uh, first of all, let's you, talk about... You think about they're overly pessimistic, is it? Overly, ex extraordinarily pessimistic. Because a lot of in, economists in, are I making am, the same argument. No, that's fine, that's fine. Everybody has the uh, right to say what they want to, yeah, what they course. believe in. Yeah. And I, I respect what his view is, mm -hmm. uh, but I would expect him to respect mine as well. Sure, sure, sure. What I'm saying is that there would be... Uh, a 
coming down, but there should be a V-shaped recovery. Let me explain how. You know, uh, you were talking about bank problems. The large amount of money that has come into the banks, mm -hmm. it is people are not going to withdraw it. Even if we take your argument that people will withdraw it, then that should increase the discretionary spending. Uh, so, you know, there is a, a sort of contradiction in what you are saying. I am saying that large amount of money coming into the banks means that banks, you know, uh, government getting a lot of money, banks getting a lot of money, this will pave the way for lowering the interest rate. What has happened, uh, Venu, is that the downward revision cycle of interest rates started in India in the year January 2015. Mm -hmm. From January 2015 until now, December 2016, how much has been the reduction in the policy interest rates? It has been 175 points. basis points. But That's a very large risen, increase. Let me finish, sir. But has investment uh, risen but, as a result? No, let, let me explain. Why has not that happened? Out of this 175 basis point reduction that has taken place, banks have passed on the decline in the interest rate to depositors. Now, mm. this is creating a problem, whereas the decline in the lending rate has been very small. So, why, why have banks not done it? Banks, they, their excuse is that they have large amount of NPAs, but, and that is why... So, that's the crux of the problem, right? no? Mm. Now, that, that, post demand right, that, that doesn't that, get solved. But that, and it that, 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 no, mm. that does get solved. I'll tell you how. Today, 13.5 ha, ha. Okay. 13 lakh rupees of resources banks crore. are getting. Mm. They have all a uh, lakh crore mm. uh, they are getting. Yeah. And what is the cost but, of raising these funds? Mm. These are all not for spending money. Uh, money which was lying here and there is also coming back. No, so, I agree with you. The interest rates right. can be brought down. No, in, but what about the top? Top 10 uh, industrial houses who owe 8 lakh crores, how will they repay no, them no, money? That's that's a big... Uh, but that is a separate point. issue. That mm. is a separate issue. But what? that's what causing the NPA stickiness, no? no, no? Boss, mm. when the banks are flushed with so much funds, mm -hmm. they will be, and, and the government getting more revenues, mm. there would be a the, the bank capitalization program is going on. Mm. It will get a big boost. In fact, the money, additional money that they get can also be used for taking care of the shortfall in GST. Mm. That is another major I, That report. I agree with you. How so do existing NPAs no, get resolved? No. Mm. What I am saying is that mm. Reserve Bank will have to concentrate, and I believe they are doing that now, mm. on transmission effect of the earlier decline in the interest rate. Policy rates... That one agrees with you. They'll right. bring down with interest that, rates. But what, what happens to existing NPAs? Mr. So Mr. existing NPAs can be taken... See... It, it, then it goes back into the political argument mm. that people have taken their money and they have ran away Malaya no, effect yeah. and you are taking poor people's money to deposit in the bank. No, no, I am purely be, asking the technical yeah, question. What happens to existing NPS? Technically, banks can recapitalization process which is on will get a big boost now mm -hmm. with the additional money that is coming into the system. Okay. Okay. With that, with that, banks in future will have no excuse but to reduce interest I, I agree with completely okay. agree with you. Now, so, no, reduction I, of the interest rate, yeah. he is saying that even no, no, if the interest rate... No, we, we assume the interest rate will be reduced. Right. We, we completely right. agree with you. Right. But I am okay. asking Mr. Arun Kumar, yeah. what happens to the existing stock of massive NPAs, problem assets, right. which 14-15% uh, yeah. so, so, of uh, yeah. outstanding so, so uh, banks... Banks cannot, uh, banks cannot use the money that's coming in to its coffers mm. to uh, uh, underwrite the NPAs because that's somebody's money. I mean, if I deposit the money in the bank, it's my money and bank cannot use that to underwrite the NPAs. Mm. NPAs have to be sorted out by getting no. the money from the companies which are having the NPAs. So are and we they, doing that? Are no, we, we, can't, on that? We, we can't do that because their profitability is already falling. Their NPAs will in fact rise rather than fall. Mm -hmm. So my point is that the banks will be in trouble. Banking profitability is going to be hit very badly and in the last two months and for the coming four or five months, I don't see banks being able to lend because they're so busy Man managing cash. Today you go to any bank branch and uh, you know my mother who's in uh, almost 90 years old, she went to make fixed deposit and the banker said I don't have time. Mm -hmm. So he's not uh, taking fixed deposit. She said I want to do internet banking. He says I don't have time for all that. I'm only managing cash. Okay. So given the problem that the bankers have and bankers are in serious trouble, you know, so therefore the banking system cannot handle that for the next four or five months. Mm -hmm. And therefore this idea that the interest rate will drop and that will somehow lead to a ri rise sure. in investment, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen because capacity utilization is already down. Mm -hmm. Bankers are not able to lend money, uh, etc. So therefore, these kind of things. Secondly, the, regarding the inflation also, I think we have to be very clear that inflation decline does not mean benefit to
to society because wages have fallen, especially in the unorganized sector. So real wages are falling, and that's why the demand problem sure. will continue in spite of inflation uh, being less. So, so, so we have. Uh, two, 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 so, so two we, we have, have really we've run out of time. In one, one minute, one we've, minute. We've run out it time. will not take so twenty four, seconds. Yeah, okay. It will not take banks. The trouble with, with the banks will be over in the next fifteen days or so, and there would not be a period of waiting of four or five months for banks to look at the other things. Okay. With flushed with the funds, they have no option but to reduce interest rate. Mm -hmm. That will give large amount of loans to SME sector, mm -hmm. and more jobs will be created, sure. and that will get the economy rolling again. Okay. So, sooner rather than later. Okay, so le let's hope uh, Mr. Uh, Narendra Jadav's optimism bears out. Uh, there are uh, two views as uh, you've seen here. Uh, and uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, in 2017. Uh, uh, that's all we have in this edition today. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks.